Hello, Klesa. How are you? I hope you guys are okay. I am fine as well. Now, let's look at uh, the positive uh, social cultural impacts. There's a creation of employment in different sectors, cultural travel agencies, creation of activities and events, hospitality, gastronomy, and shopping, etc. So that is uh, the same as what we have discussed earlier. The infrastructure, the infrastructures built for tourism could be used by the local population. For example, airport, theaters, parks, um, concert halls, and the beautification of the city. So these um the, the, these infrastructures that are brought by this tourism can be used by the local communities theaters can people the local people can get, go and perform there on the on the parks they can work on the parks and the concert halls they can uh, perform there on the concert halls and use it for their own benefit and the beauty and the beautification of the city the city becomes um becomes um beautiful and bring some aesthetic values onto the side, onto the, uh, onto the towns as well. Um, demand of skilled jobs um, to offer best services and to realize uh, management projects in all sectors. And this increases investment in education and training of local people. That's very, very crucial. So um, we'll see, we'll see um, in most, in most uh, cases, the people that live around um, these cultural heritage sites uh, due to due to the sufficient uh, due to the sufficient um, um, economies and uh, money that is brought by the by the tourism sector, you see that there is an increase in investment in education and training for the local people. You find that in most places in most places there uh, the guys are having something to do and they are actually educated. They can take you around the place. They can speak proper English. They can move you with around so that's an advantage to the people as well demand of skilled jobs to offer best services and realize management projects in all sectors and increase of investment in education and training up uh, we have mentioned that one so the other one here is the issue for cultural exchange between visitors and local communities you see um in most places are uh, when the visitors come when uh, when tourists come to a certain place they um they actually live when they live instead uh, they actually have something of a different culture that they had been um viewing for example i remember we had uh, one white guy who, who was able to dance uh, one of the traditional dances there that is called uh, is, is chigicha so you see there is actually exchange of um of cultures between um the, the local communities and the visitors so which actually improves uh, what you call uh, collaboration and interaction, valorization of local culture, investment in the conservation and the protection of the tourist places. It's that one is clear. And again, recovery of um, handcraft, recovery of handcrafts, and um, ancient traditions, rituals, and celebrations. Which you see, we have mentioned that one as well. Let's proceed now to the positive um, environmental impact. Again, the environmental awareness, it, it actually contributes to environmental awareness, the interest of natural areas and conservation of the places and sites. That's another positive issue. Um, minimization of population and district cleaning. That's another um, issue. Uh, creation and, and um, launch of, conserv of conservation projects that's um another issue is it contributes in positive in terms of uh bringing money for such projects uh, to be to be run so it's an advantage there the negative um environmental impact of environment the negative um environmental impact there is overcrowding of uh overcrowding of destination and places as we have mentioned that one it, uh, most people come to these areas to have a better living, so it actually causes overpopulation and becomes the area becomes populated, and there are issues to do with them um, carbon. There, there are issues to do with the uh, land pollution. There is issues to do with the uh, water pollution. There is issues to do with a uh, shortage with or shortage of resources. So it the competition becomes too high on on the area and 
it actually affects the authenticity of the site and negatively impacts um, on conservation of the site and preservation. Excessive land um, landscape impact by building out of control. As I've mentioned that the more the, the, more the people come on, on, on to uh, a cultural heritage site to cycle around, um, it becomes, um, it becomes uh, very difficult for people to, 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 to build houses there or to rent such places because they are very expensive. So there's quite a number of building that take place and the landscape is being affected there. There is also the generation of waste and pollution. I uh, talked about that one and um, water. So these are the negative effects that brought by these um, by these things. Now let's go to the conclusions. Um, through analyzing these positive and negative impacts of tourism upon heritage properties, a few following uh, recommendations should be considered to achieve a type of tourism where the stakeholders. Uh, interests are, are respected and based on the principle of sustainable development. One, cultural tourism should not limit to the historic buildings. It should include the intangible heritage and the new uh, creative industries. So as I have mentioned, I remember, I remember um, on the previous lecture, I've been telling about uh, this place which is a, a shrine, a rain-making a rain making um a shrine, which was actually um preserved through um taboos. So the disrespect of uh, those taboos around that area has actually destroyed the site. So it is very important that um that uh, tourists are taught about these areas before they get into these areas because there are certain there are certain things that they're supposed to do at the site there are certain things that they're not supposed to do so um i remember there's also a story of another white guy uh who was taken to the site and he was uh, wearing his um he was wearing his spectacles so uh the the, the tour guide has in has actually instructed him uh to remove them if he wanted to enter the site but he insisted that he cannot see properly so the story was the guy went there into the site the moment he entered into the site and his um his his spectacles um dropped down from nowhere nobody took them off but they dropped down and then it was broken into smaller pieces which he could not pick and join them. So these are the other things that needs to be taken to be taken into consideration. Intangible cultural heritage has to be taken into consideration as well. Secondly, to encourage the communication between um, local government and the communities and the consequently awareness of needs and interests of the local communities. So um, local communities are in the center of um, preservation of cultural heritage sites because um, these cultural heritage sites belongs to them. They actually in their um, they actually in their watch. So any conservation measure or any preservative preservative measure that can be taken should be centered around um, the local communities because the local communities are actually the the, the, the watchmen for these sites. They are actually also they, they can also become um, the destroyers of these sites. So the more we exclude them, the more um, we, we, we make the sites vulnerable to them. So it is very, very, very important that uh, any measure that is taken should be uh, centered around the local communities. And they should be, their interests should be listened, should be listened to, their interests should be taken into consideration. The collaboration between um, all stakeholders and governments, communities, owners, businesses, and NGOs, ETC, I remember there was once um, a challenge in uh, Victoria Falls whereby the local people were not getting jobs or the jobs uh, were becoming were becoming scarce for them. So they had to march and campaign and, um, and complain about the people that are not coming around the Victoria town, 
Victoria Falls town that are employed in the area. So it is very important that um, such things are taken into consideration because the moment we not include the local communities, the moment we not empower them, um, they become dangerous to cultural heritage um, places. So first, they have to be taken into consideration. They have to be, they have to be listened to. Also, the creation of campaigns to raise public awareness about the impact of our tourism in the world heritage properties and protected areas. The, the crowd, or I may say the local custodians needs to be educated on the impact of um, tourism in world heritage properties and uh, protected sites. Because once they are not aware of this impact, what they will only prioritize, they will only prioritize on the benefits of tourism, forgetting uh, the impact and forgetting that as time goes on, those, uh, those sites will be wiped and no one will be, coming, will be coming for those sites. So they need to be taught, there needs to be, there needs to be programs that educate them, there needs to be product programs um, that teach them on how to preserve their own heritage on how to protect their own heritage from themselves. So it is uh, very important to consider such things to achieve uh, sustainable uh, tourism and development. Creation of management plan where conservation and preservation of the, pro of the properties and the use of these sites are compatible. There should be a compatibility between the conservation and uh, the preservation of these properties and if there, there are some contradictions around these, around these uh, practices, then we will not be able to achieve um, any proper conservation there. Creation, uh, of, creation of creative policies that promote tourism and give life to the city, respecting the, tradi the traditional celebrations and the cult cultural identity. So the moment, um, we, the moment we do not respect the cultural identity or the moment we forget about the cultural cele ce celebrations of, um, of the locals at these uh, sites, we, have, we would have contributed degradation of this site. So we have to, there's things that need to be, to be respected and um, followed properly. Determine the types of tourists at the site, at the site and his needs. That's one is simple and straightforward. Determine the type of uh, tourist at the site and his needs. So it all talks about the satisfaction of um, the tourist and what he needs. So the tourist has to be satisfied and determine their needs. The moment we, do, we, we, we discover what is it that they want, because when someone leaves his country to come and visit the cultural heritage, there is something that he actually needs to achieve. So there's need, those needs have to be met so that um, they can return again to encourage the creation of innovative uh, business that offer services for all types of visitors based in traditional and lifestyle of the community. And finally, to facilitate the creation of business with uh, economic aid and administrative. So that's um, the end of this presentation. I tried to make it shorter than the previous one. So these are the effects of um, tourism on this side. So that's when we see that indeed tourism needs to be properly sustained so that there is a continuation in conservation and uh, in visitation of this site. So it is very important that the government policies are compatible with the, the local community, with the local community policies so that they can take these sites further and protect them for the future generations. Thank you again. Okay. Uh, we shall meet again in the next lecture.